Well, this lane is kind of one of those little zigzaggy lanes that have ended up this way because of how the different quarters have been expanded. Uh, so typically they expand by buying land or buying up another block, integrating it into the college, expanding a bit like amoebas. But of course, they want to be separate, so they have this lane between that gets ever more convoluted. And then you add walls, because you need to keep the townspeople out. And in the Middle Ages this was no laughing matter, there was quite a lot of uh, riots between town and gown. So the result was this walls are in order to keep the uh, people with pitchforks uh, and torches out uh, when they think you've done too much mad science. Well, maybe not the last part, but uh, th at least we would function well for it. Yeah. So Queen's Lane is absolutely lovely in the spring, yeah, because it, you have this interface between the gar hidden gardens you see go coming over the walls, as well as the old walls, and then of course the spires uh, around you. It's a, Oxford is a very inspiring area to work in, especially when thinking about the future. It might seem bizarre to have the Future of Humanity Institute in a traditional place like Oxford, but it actually makes sense. Oxford has been around for 800 years, and we want to make sure that it's going to be around for at least 800 years too. And ideally we're going to be some humans, or post-humans, around here. Well actually the Saxton Tower has been around for over a thousand years, so yeah. I don't know if it was Oxford back then. Uh, oh yes, it was, uh, and it's kind of part of the monastic complex that led to Oxford. So the Saxon Tower is interesting because it's about a thousand years old. When I showed that to an American friend, he was simply amazed. Wow, what an ancient building! He went forward and reverently touched the stones. Later, when he was blogging about it, he had an interesting realization. That stone is probably 60 million years old, but we didn't pay attention to it until it was part of this very new kind of brief building. Typically we humans have a very skewed perspective of time. We remember our past and we look at about uh, the next few years into our future. We might worry about our retirement funds, but that's about it. And maybe we think about history. A few centuries is a long time. But actually that's very short when we look at the time scales that are actually going on around us. The rocks in these walls are million years old. They're from sandstone from the ocean that was covering Britain at that time. And that sand itself is partially eroded from other places and partially from organisms that evolved over hundreds of millions of years. And of course, this continental plate I'm standing on right now, it's been around for about a billion years or so. Which is still very short in a universe that has been lasting for just 13 billion years. Which is still a very short interval of time, because we're at the start of the history of the universe. Uh, the universe is most likely going to outlast this era enormously. Right now, stars are being born. It's going to be known as the brightness, the first early days of the universe. Which, of course, in a trillion years, we're not going to make any stars anymore. The red dwarfs are going to die out, but we're still going to be planets and objects around. For a very long and very dark era, there are still going to be structures in the universe. And it's quite possible, if we play our cards right, that there might be intelligence in that far future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. d nothing really lasts forever. We're finite beings in a universe ruled by a bit of randomness, which means that sooner or later our luck runs out. It turns out that atoms are not perfectly stable. There are some theories suggest that protons might decay over a very long time spans. But even if they don't, eventually, by sheer chance, atoms will first turn into iron, spontaneous fusing, or black holes, which will then will evaporate by Hawking radiation. So nothing really lasts forever in the universe. Maybe super advanced civilization can find a way around it, but right now we don't know any laws of physics that allow that. Still, a few trillion years, I think we have a chance of doing quite amazing things in the meantime. So the Great Filter is an idea that's been uh, tossed around in discussions about uh, alien life. So we don't see any alien intelligent civilizations, and maybe that is because the step leading to intelligence is very unlikely. Maybe life itself is very unlikely or it's very unlikely that intelligent life ever gets anywhere. So somewhere there is a great filter, the gate that kind of keeps uh, intelligence away, away from putting uh, advertisements and parking lots across the universe. And we would really like to know whether it's in the future or past. <laughs> Thank you.